Hello and welcome to Inside Sports. I'm your host, Todd Blackstock. We have a great show for you today. As decorated author and sports writer Rob Raines will join us in studio to discuss his career and the wonderful cause he supports. Plus, Melanie Steen has a story on the new XFL team making its preparations to play right here in St. Louis. And our Inside Sports flashback will look into the career of one of the legendary goalies in NHL history who restarted his career with the Blues in the mid-90s. So we have all this and much more coming up next on Inside Sports. Well, the St. Louis Sports Commission is bringing in a big-time pickleball tournament to St. Louis in September. If you're wondering what pickleball is, it's a paddleball sport combining the elements of tennis, badminton, and ping pong using solid paddles and a perforated wiffle ball. Come check out this USA PA sanctioned event at the Dwight Davis Tennis Center in Forest Park. For more information, contact tournament director Jim Berger at 314-960-1787. Well, on Thursday, September 12th, the Biz-5K, presented by Worldwide Technology, will be held downtown at the Soldiers Memorial. It will promote health and wellness in the workplace while building team camaraderie. Proceeds benefit the St. Louis Sports Commission and the many causes it supports. And we have more soccer coming to Bush Stadium on Tuesday, September 10th, when the USA men's national team hosts fifth-ranked Uruguay. Tickets are available at the Bush Stadium box office or at cardinals.com. There's a lot of action coming to the city. Well, our first story today, Inside Sports reporter Melanie Steen will take us inside the new St. Louis XFL football team. Melanie. The St. Louis region has not had a professional football team here since 2015, but that will all change in early 2020 when the XFL takes over. The new head coach, Jonathan Hayes, is no stranger to football fans, having served more than a decade in the NFL, including nine seasons as a player with the Kansas City Chiefs and two seasons with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So we uh, you know, interviewed a whole bunch of coaches, as, you, as you'd expect, and a lot of guys that were very interested in getting involved in our league. And what I liked about him is he's a Midwestern guy, right? He spent a lot of time in Kansas City, spent a lot of time in Iowa as a college student, in Cincinnati. These are all you know, cities very, I think, similar to, uh, you know, to St. Louis. And he's a very down-to-earth, uh, Midwestern kind of guy. I grew up in Ohio. I like the Midwest. I like guys that have two feet on the ground and they're solid and sort of salt of the earth. Out of the eight cities with an XFL team, St. Louis was the final stop for those hoping to try out, and the Show Me State did not disappoint. While the other major cities averaged between 110 and 115 tryouts, St. Louis saw as many as 150 hopefuls. He has been um, playing since age five. He started out with the JJK, Jackie Joyner Kersey Center, all the way to the NFL, you know, some stints in the NFL. So. Chaz Rogers braved the heat in support of her brother, Daniel Williams, who was hoping for a spot as a wide receiver. That's him, number 20. But also, you know, totally impressed with the response we've got here in St. Louis. Uh, not just from the players, but from fans. You know, we've got people that come out just to watch a tryout, basically. Uh, and it shows me how deep the passion is in this city for professional football. And we're, we're super excited. This, this could be, ironically, right, you know, our best market in a sense because uh, there's just such a groundswell of support for pro football. And people miss it, quite honestly. They miss it. Um, I went to Northwestern, uh, played receiver, and, um, you know, played four years there. And then... Uh, Went to a couple mini camps with the Giants and the Jaguars. Any surprises out here in the drills? Uh, no, it wasn't surprising because like because like I already been like working out and stuff, so everything everything was just natural. So I, I already had a, I already had a good feeling that I, that I was going to do a good job. As we get closer to our draft, um, you, you know we'll we'll also be watching the camps, uh, the NFL camps, to see the guys that get released and cut, so that we have a chance to go. And, and, and have an opportunity to sign them so that they can be in our draft in October. Even though his playing days are long behind him, I asked Commissioner Luck if he still has the same passion for the game. I, the game's been a part of my life and my family's life, obviously, for you know, many, many years. Uh, I still have the same excitement, the same tingling when I, you know, uh, that I remember as a player, you know, going back to being a you know, high school or even a grade school kid, I feel those same, those same feelings when I go watch my son play right, you know, in the NFL. Commissioner Luck is the father of the 2012 first round draft pick, Andrew Luck, who's been a quarterback with the Indianapolis Colts ever since. 
What, what will you guys do in the XFL to hold the attention of, you know, sports fans? I mean, we're talking about hockey season. Mm -hmm. You know, the Blues are coming off the Stanley Cup sure. win. I mean, sure. everybody's going to have eyes on them. What are you guys going to do to make this interesting and fun for the fans? Well, I think that the one thing if you give people is competition. If you give them a good product that is, is ready to go out and compete every day and, and show, them that, show people that you're not scared to back down to anything, they'll come. The team will practice here at the Lou Fuse Training Facility in Earth City with all of their home games being played in downtown St. Louis at the Dome at America Center. Now, in case you were wondering, the XFL officially kicks off their season on Saturday, February 8th, 2020. Todd, back to you. Thanks, Melody. It seems like XFL Commissioner Oliver Luck is excited to have St. Louis on board as a new expansion team. A new head coach, Jonathan Hayes, has what it takes to guide our team. Well, joining us now is a studio member of the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame. He was a writer for the St. Louis Globe Democrat, USA Today, and he's the author of 33 books and is now covering the Cardinals and Blues with STLSportsPage.com. This time we welcome Rob Raines to Inside Sports. Rob? Thank you. My pleasure. You know, you're not only a studio member, you're a real member <laughs> of the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame. Very, uh, very honored. You know, you've uh, had a classic career starting, I guess, maybe back with the Globe Democrat. I actually started with United Press International Wire Service here in no town kidding. first. I worked there for a couple, for about six years before I went to the Globe. UPI, yeah. In 1984, yeah, back when we had two wire service things. Yeah, so I go, I go way back, very, fo very fortunate, very uh, privileged to do what I do. You know, the AP and UPI International, those were both, mm -hmm. you know, big wire services Competitors, yeah. 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 Well, in, in competitors, the Globe Democrat and the St. Louis Post-Dispatch were, were competitors back then. Yeah, Rick Hummel and I were the uh, beat writers at the same time, so we, we go way back, sure, to many cab rides, many uh, airplane flights, uh, you know, good friends, and but uh, we had a healthy respect for each other and what we did, and, and still do today for that for that matter, but uh, it, it's been, been a lot of fun. Now, with the Globe Democrat, I obviously you must have worked with Bob Burns. Mm -hmm. Uh, I saw Bob speak before, and you know he was a great speaker, and he had a great hold on St. Louis. He really seemed to know yeah. the ins and outs of not only the sports scene, but just the city and the and, and the yeah, region as well. It was a different era back then. You know, you had you had Bob Burns at the Globe, you had Bob Bragg at the Post, and I think they they cared more about the city and about St. Louis and, and wanting it to succeed. And you know, it was a, an era where you know you didn't have all the social media world that you have today, and you didn't have the uh, you know, talk radio stations as much as you have today. So it, it was more, po I think it was more positive. I think, you know, you didn't really, you, you still had to report the negative news because obviously you're in the business of covering a team when they're not playing well. You have to say they're not playing well. But I don't think you went out of your way to kind of take cheap shots at, at people and to always be looking for the negative instead of the positive. So do you think St. Louis wasn't big enough to have two newspapers? Uh, that would be a topic or? for another show because okay. it was, it, there were a lot of things that happened at, uh, toward the end of the Globe Democrats' life, which were just a series of unfortunate events, basically. Yeah, no, I think that the, the city could have supported two newspapers. I think it was just a, a matter of things happening that were kind of out of anybody's control, and it was just, you know, it, it, business happened. I mean, I always, I always like to say that the, the Globe folded before it became popular for newspapers to go out of business. We kind of beat the, beat the trend. <laughs> but yeah, I went out of business in 1986, 132-year run as the uh, morning newspaper here in St. Louis. So it was, it was fun. And I, you know, I tell people today, I, I love that job. I love covering the Cardinals as a newspaper beat writer. It was kind of basically the only job I ever wanted in my life and was lucky enough to get it as a, at a very young age. And, you know, probably to this day, has, you know, even though I've gone on to do a lot of other things, had the Globe Democrat not gone out of business, I would probably still be there today. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, you did have the opportunity to work at USA Today right. and, and a pretty prominent role with a a national yeah, yeah I was there newspaper. when we started I was one of the people that started we, had, we started a thing called USA Today Baseball Weekly in 1991 and I was one of the original editors that uh, that went on board there to cover the National League so my beat was to cover the entire National League uh, got to go all over the country go to all the playoff games you know everything that uh, that that job entailed and it was it was a lot of fun we were there I was there about five years and and then decided to move on and do some other stuff but it was uh, it, it was a unique opportunity to to kind of expand from just the local local thing. That's kind of when the book writing career kind of took off as well. So it was it was a neat opportunity to be involved in something from the start. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I always tell people the, the first year that I was there was the best job I ever had because we didn't have a budget. Nobody knew how much money <laughs> this thing was going to cost. 
and we had you know editors, of, the publishers of, of the newspaper that were behind it that you know basically gave us a blank check. So I go in and say I want to go to California for a week to write a couple of stories. Okay, go ahead. You know, see you later. So it was it was fun. And then by the second or third year, they kind of realized that we yeah, you're drinking <laughs> some uh, you know different. some some top end cabernets and eating. <laughs> Filet and lobster. Oh, we never had, to do, road, huh? never had to do that, but I mean, just the freedom to go and do the <laughs> stories that I wanted to do was fun. Now, with that being, uh, you know, allowed and, and your job was going all around to the National League teams, mm -hmm. we all know St. Louis is a great baseball town, but right. what were some of your other favorite towns, places to visit? Yeah, in, 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 that, in that era, the two best teams were Atlanta and Pittsburgh, so, so we were there a lot. And uh, it's funny, we were talking before we came on the air about Andy Van Slyke and, and his, uh, his career. And, and obviously, you know, started out in St. Louis, then went to Pittsburgh. Well, he was in Pittsburgh at that point. But we had been very good friends already in Pittsburgh. So I was just around that team a lot and had a lot of good, good fun memories uh, of covering those playoff games between the, the Braves and the Pirates early, early 90s. You know, I was there when the uh, Sid Breen play happened at, at Atlanta at Stadium that, you know, still was one. I always tell people walking into that Pirate clubhouse after they lost that game to Atlanta was the worst clubhouse I was ever in in my life. I mean, it was just totally shocking, unbelievable event. So it was, it, all those kind of moments are, are happy memories. You also had a chance to, to teach Mm -hmm. There was uh, some funds became available, and you got to teach at Arizona State that, University. That's why we left Baseball and Weekly, too, to be honest with you, because they had a, a freedom. The Freedom Forum had funded a, a professional in residence position to teach sports writing for a year at Arizona State, and it was just something that my wife and I kind of decided, hey, why not? You know, what? What? Uh, let's go for it. And thought, thinking it was a one-year appointment, so we obviously knew it was going to be a temporary situation to live out there for a year, and. and uh, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it and, and met a lot of neat people and, and still in touch today with some of my former students and, and people who were in that ex experience. And that was what, through a variety of circumstances, it just seemed that the time was right to move back to St. Louis after, after that uh, year was over and we've been here since. Now you've written like 33 books over the years, mm -hmm. including That's a Winner, the Jack Buck biography, along with uh, Bob Bragg. I brought that. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, my, my dad had it in his basement. And, he got me that book for Christmas one year. Yeah. And that must have been quite a treat working with Jack Buck and, and Bob Bragg. I yeah. mean, you work with Bob Burns, right. the Globe Democrat, and here you are with Bob Bragg. I'm sure you saw him in the press box all oh, yeah. the time. No but being able to collaborate and having your name on a book next to Jack Buck was, and Bob was, Bragg was pretty I always tell people it's my favorite book because of the fact, not that it's probably the, may not necessarily be written the best, but we had the most fun working on it because I spent so much time with Jack in you know doing the interview. I mean, I remember at one point we were doing an interview to, to talk about the book, and he looked at me and goes, this thing's going to be a 1,000 pages long. <laughs> and I said, ah, we're going to hold it a little bit under that. Okay, so, but just, you know, I, I think it, you know, for people who haven't read it, it's still a very relevant book, but it was, it was I think it surprises some people because it's not just about baseball or, or you know, his broadcasting career because we talked about, you know, growing up in the Depression and, and going through the whole civil rights movement and, and just everything that he experienced as a, as a, you know, adult male. I mean, not necessarily because anything to do with his career, but just the, the times that he lived in and everything that happened during those, those you know, decades and years was, was important to him. And, it, and we, you know, tried to put that in the book. So it was fun. It was a fun project. It's pretty neat how he moved into the hill right down the street from where Yogi Berra yeah. and Joe Garagiola lived right across the street from each other. It's like, you know, how can, and then you had the, the famous soccer people right around yeah. there. How, you know, it, isn't it amazing that three icons like that would live on the same block? Yeah, well, two of them grew up there, yeah, you know, and, and Jack just happened to, I don't, think, I don't think Jack knew that when he moved there, you know, it just happened to be the, the spot where just he moved. Spot, but, yeah. Yeah, but he, you know, yeah, he was, he was great. I mean, I, he treated me really well. We actually had a deal one time, I was supposed to go to work for him, you know, kind of talk about how life's fates happen. You know, when he got the job at CBS to do the uh, the national play-by-play -play broadcast, he hired me to be his notes guy to go and do the games. Well, he was supposed to be the number two announcer. Well, and Brett Musbury were supposed to be the number one guy. Well, lo and behold, Musbury, through a variety of circumstances, lost that job, and they elevated Jack to the number one team to work with Tim McCarver. And so Jack told me, he said, I think our deal is still the same. Well, it turned out that they'd already had a guy for that team to be the, the notes guy. So I was still offered the chance to do the notes stuff for the number two team with Dick Stockton and I forget, I think Jim Cott was going to be the guy with him. And I said, no, I said, the only reason I wanted to do this was to work with Jack. So then it was shortly after that that the Baseball Weekly job opened up. So had I not, had I gotten the thing with Jack, probably not would have not gotten the Baseball Weekly job. So it's just, you know, the way things work out. Oh, it works out. Uh, we do want to talk about, uh, get back to some of the books here in a minute. I want to talk about a great organization mm -hmm. that 
you know, you support and, and helped create with your Correct. family. But I did want to ask you before that, you know, kind of about the broadcasters from St. Louis. It mm -hmm. seems like there's a lot of famous broadcasters Absolutely. and writers that have come from St. Louis. I mean, you think of Harry Carey, you think of Jack Buck, Bob Costas cut his teeth here, mm -hmm. uh, Chip Carey, Joe Buck, uh, Steve Schlanger, guys like Taylor Twellman, you know, in, in soccer, the list goes on and on. What do you think it is about St. Louis yeah. that the people coming through here that they can go on nationally or they just become very famous? I, I think part of it is because St. Louis is such a great sports town. I, I think you kind of, especially if you grow up in St. Louis and you have any kind of an interest in sports at all, I think it just kind of breeds that. I mean, I didn't grow up here. I grew up in Springfield, Missouri, but obviously was a Cardinal fan, was a St. Louis sports fan growing up. And, you know, I tell people, well, this is, you know, covering sports is really the only thing I ever wanted to do because I, I knew I loved sports and wanted to be around sports, but also given my level of athletic ability, which was none, that figured out that, you know, I had to do something else to be around sports and riding kind of was the vehicle to do that. But, but I just think it, I just think, you know, you grow up here as a sports fan, you, you love it, you want to be involved with it. And I think that's, that's, you know, you have to have a passion for something, I think, to be really good at it. And I think that if you have that passion for sports and want to get into it, especially in St. Louis, then there's opportunities there to do that. Recently, I met your wife, Sally, at a St. Louis Surge game. Yeah. We covered it. I do the, uh, the announcing there for the games. And she was with some, some kids from the Rainbows for Kids. And right. I went over and met a, a young lady named JC. And it inspired me for the rest of that day. And I thought it would be really neat to, to talk to you about this organization. And I know it, it really uh, hits close to yeah, home absolutely. how it was founded. Yeah, this is our 20th anniversary actually coming up. It's an all-volunteer organization, and we support children with cancer and other serious illnesses. Rainbowsforkids.org is the website if anybody's interested in, in finding more about it. But it's it's a charity that we started when our niece, Annie, who was uh, Sally's goddaughter, uh, developed a brain tumor 20 years ago. And unfortunately, they you know the prognosis was not very good. And so we said, well, what can we do to help these kids, you know, make them enjoy themselves? So we actually, our kids were young at the time, two boys, and they put on a little backyard carnival. And we, the Rams donated some hats, and we just made, raised some money and, and uh, put on a party and, and at Cardinal Glennon Hospital for the kids. And that just kind of grew from there into a, a 501c3 charity. And now we put on a lot of different events and do a lot of different activities for the kids to kind of give them some, the motto of the organization is giving the kids something to look forward to. Brad Thompson was able to come out and do our all-star game. Mike Schultz uh, this year was there to be on hand as a, a special guest. We do a, a game for kids that can't really get an opportunity to play, you know, a normal baseball season and their brothers and sisters to play as well and take kids to events like the Surge game and we have nights at the Muni, have a Mom's Day party, take kids to the Cardinals game. So just a lot of fun to, uh, to kind of give them something else to think about and, and something to do because we saw how it affected our niece and, and her sisters and, and just to have wanted to give, give back because of, we know what they went through. So we know what these other kids are going through as well. And it's been a, it's been a really rewarding experience to, to do that over so the years. So if someone wants to get a hold or mm -hmm. you know, make a contribution to Rainbows for Kids, right. what should they do? The, the Rainbows for Kids or .org is the website. You also can get there off of the sdlsportspage.com website as well. There is a link to the Rainbows for Kids page on that site. We do have our uh, 20th anniversary gala coming up in November, November 23rd at the Maristar Casino. So we we're uh, looking forward to a lot of special guests will be on hand, you know, dinner, auction, all that kind of stuff. The, uh, Butch Wax and the Hollywoods will be playing, so it's a, the old peoples will be one of the featured entertainers. Of the evening. It'll be a fun night. That information will be on the website as well. And you've written 33 books. I brought one, and you brought one. Before we let you go, tell us about All Roads Lead to St. Louis, because it, it seems to me like it might have something to do with the farm system. Yeah. The farm system in St. Louis, you know, and uh, you know, they yeah. had a lot to do with creating yeah. absolutely the Branch farm Ricky started system. basically Branch in the 1920s Ricky. yeah so yeah I, I one of the things i do for the website in addition to covering the team at the major league level is i go and do a lot of minor league features and uh, last year sally and i were on the road uh, i think we were actually in johnson city tennessee doing a piece on nolan gorman their number one draft pick and she looked at me and said you know we, we go to all these cities why don't we do something you know more than just write stories so that was the birth of the of the book and it's just it's kind of a guidebook kind of a travel guidebook uh, luckily triple a of missouri and the Drury hotels are two of our sponsors were able to uh, to come be involved in it and it was just it was a lot of fun to to put it together so it's, anybody who loves cardinal baseball i think would love trips to the minor leagues fantastic and uh we uh, love to watch you check out your work on stl sportspage.com thank you covering the blues and the cardinals i appreciate it thank you thank you so much rob rains well, the Blues finally won their first Stanley Cup ever in 2019, in large part because of stellar goaltending from Jordan Bennington. The Blues have had some great goalies over the year, and on today's Inside Sports Flashback, we look at the career of one of the greatest ever who revived his career right here in St. Louis.
Former St. Louis Blues goalie Grant Buer was one of the greatest in NHL history. In 1981, he was selected in the first round of the draft by the Edmonton Oilers. Over the next 10 seasons, Buer dominated the NHL, winning five Stanley Cups. As an LA King, he appeared to be overweight and out of shape. His stellar career looked to be over. But after the 1994-95 campaign, the Maverick St. Louis Blues, led by Iron Mike Keenan, signed Fuhrer to a free agent contract. Fuhrer became healthy again, and with a new outlook on life, he dazzled Blues fans with his sensational athletic ability. And he frustrated opposing players like Keith Kachuk. Shot, and a shot blocked, and Fuhrer ends up with a puck hole. Maybe do you believe that? And Kachuk is furious. Phoenix with two, three, I don't know how many chances there to score. Fuhrer showed his toughness and grit, storming out of the crease to come to fight for his teammates. So Grant Fuhrer jumped in to help out Igor Kravchuk. That's Kilger, and they're having a discussion. Kilger with Grant Fuhrer. But the beating on the ice was ruthless and ended his career. In 1999, Fuhrer went to Calgary, but after 23 games, he retired. He was inducted into the NHL Hall of Fame in 2003 as the first African-American player selected. The greatest player of all time, Wayne Gretzky, considers Fuhrer the greatest goalie of all time. One minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs, just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed, and they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs, and it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. I am Luke Rickno, and you're watching STL Television. I'm going to stay low at Pete Watch it because you won't like me when I get angry. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching Inside Sports. We'll see you next time.